she received, signed with her husband's name, is a forgery. Léon Dufresne, Chandler's chief agent in Paris, is mysteriously missing. Bob and Betty return from a sightseeing trip with the news that in a narrow street near Notre Dame Cathedral, they have seen a man resembling Dufresne struggling with a huge sinister fellow in an old house. Chandler and Bob return to the house and discover Dufresne alone and unconscious. The present act opens in the hotel. Chandu, the magician. Well, here we are, Mother. Didn't Uncle Frank come? Not yet. So you might just as well have come down to lunch with us. You know, you're not going to help Father any by starving yourself to death. Oh, don't pick on her, Bob. Mother, I asked him to bring you up some lunch. I thought you might like something to eat. It'll be here in just a minute. Thank you, dear. I'm not hungry. Well, you'd better eat, though. Father will scold us for not taking care of you when we tell him about it. <laughs> Don't worry about me, dear. I'm all right. Oh, that must be Uncle Frank now. Come in. Oh. It's your lunch, Mother. Put it here on the table, Antoine. Dear Mother, doesn't that look good? Madame requires. Nothing more, Antoine. Thank you. Merci, Madame. Now, come on, Mother. Try to eat something, won't you? Yeah, you act as though we'd already found out that Father was drowned or something. Oh, Bob. Well, I didn't mean that exactly. You know I didn't. Oh, there you are at last, Frank. Yes. I've had a very busy morning. The Frank's still unconscious at the hospital. Did you go through that old house where we found him, Uncle Frank? Yes. I took two gendarmes, and we went through it from the cellar to the roof. All the tenants told the same story. The frame was brought there by two men who rented that ground floor room... And stayed there with him day and night. Wouldn't you think that some of them would have become suspicious and called the police, Frank? I think most of those people are glad to keep out of the way of the police themselves. The two men told the same story. That Dufresne was their brother and was insane. And that they were keeping him there for a few days before taking him away from Paris. And did the people believe that, Uncle Frank? I suppose not, but they wouldn't interfere. If I'd realized Dufresne hadn't gone away somewhere himself, I would have offered a reward for information about him. Those cutthroats down there would surrender their entire family for a hundred francs. Oh, why do you suppose they ran away? I think they were afraid someone had heard Dufresne break the window and call for help. And decided to go away before the police came and arrested them. And so they just fractured his skull while they were about it, huh, Uncle Frank? Yes. Mm, I'm surprised they didn't kill him. They may have been instructed not to. What I wonder is, why Mr. Dufresne wrote that letter to you, Uncle Frank? And even sealed it up in an envelope, and still it wasn't finished. Well, why do you suppose that was? The letter said he'd been writing on it for several days, you know. And he may have felt it was not safe to try to write any more. I mean, perhaps he thought he'd rather let it go as it was than run the risk of those fellows finding it. Yeah, or he might have been left alone for just a minute and thought that was a good chance to throw the letter out the window, Uncle Frank. Yes, but we'll find out those things when he recovers consciousness. They're going to call me from the hospital as soon as he's able to speak. And you haven't learned one thing about Robert, have you, Frank? Well, yes, I've learned a few things. I've been to Robert's laboratory. You didn't find anything that would give you an indication of where Robert might be? No, the place had been cleaned out. There was nothing there except a few empty bottles that had held chemicals. No. Can't have happened to Robert. Well, Uncle Frank, I should think you'd be afraid to go there. I mean, how do you know they aren't watching that building? Who do you mean by they? Well, somebody must have taken Father away from there. He wouldn't just walk out in the street with his hands full of test tubes. But you see, I didn't go there in my own clothes, Bob. You mean you went in the sky? Well, yes. You know uh, what a pompier is? I thought a pompier was a fireman with a brass helmet and everything. That's right. You know, in Paris, the person who owns the building is charged the fee for calling the fire department when there's a fire. So it's to every landlord's advantage to keep the cost of calling firemen down to a minimum. Well, can you beat that? I dressed myself in the uniform of a fireman and went boldly to the door of this place and announced that I'd been called to see about a fire in the chimney. Oh, I wish I could have seen you, Uncle Frank. Frank, I don't understand how Robert's been communicating with Mr. Dufresne all this time. How did he get word to Mr. Dufresne or get letters out to be mailed? Well, you see, Dorothy, the chemist on the ground floor was one of our men. He didn't know who Robert was, but he knew there was something going on upstairs. It was not to be spoken of. 
His wife had been getting Robert's meals and also taking messages for him to Dufresne. But where are this chemist and his wife? I don't know. Dufresne's letter said nothing about them, you know. He just said he'd received a message from me telling him to close up the chemist's shop. And when he went there to follow my instructions, he found the chemist and his wife gone and the shop closed. But Mr. Dufresne didn't say a word about them in his letter, did he, Uncle Frank? No. And that must mean they were not there when he arrived. Do you mean the chemist was really working for someone else all the time, Frank? Oh, no, I don't mean that. I think he and his wife were probably sent away by a message purporting to come from Dufresne. Well, gee, it certainly is complicated, isn't it? Mother gets a message from Father saying he has to go away for a few days. And Mr. Dufresne gets a message from you telling him to close up the chemist shop. And the chemist gets a message from Mr. Dufresne telling him to go away. And don't and... forget, Father told Mr. Dufresne Uncle Frank wanted him to come to Cairo. But what can be the purpose of all this, Frank? Surely... The purpose was to get into Robert's laboratory and search him. But why? Because they think he's made a discovery that they can use. And that means those papers of Robert's that were stolen from the house in Beverly Hills have never been found. What do you think they are, Uncle Frank? I think they're in the hands of some person, some native in Algeria or Egypt, who doesn't know what they are. Don't you know a ranger said Roxaw had had the Arab who stole the papers in Alexandria killed? The one who tried to sell them to me in Algiers? Yes. Well, if the papers are just kicking around in some native house down there in Algiers, they certainly will never do anybody any harm. No, unless someone comes along who realizes their real value. As a matter of fact, those papers are just like an unexploded shell lying around somewhere where anyone might come along and kick it. Right. I know. But who would want Robert's secret now? And how can you even begin to look for these men and the men who've sent Robert away? Well, first, of course, I went to the police. Foreigners are required to register with them. And we may find them that way. I'm having Dimitri looked up. I know if he came to Paris, he might be able to lead us to the rest. Listen, there's that summons thing. Now I bet you'll find out about Dimitri and Father and everybody. My crystal ball. There it is. Maybe all look, Uncle Frank. It may be about Father. Yes, or... What a strange picture. Gee, yes. The ocean, isn't it? But it sure looks funny. How black and menacing the water looks. Look at the rocks at the edge. They're toppling over into the water. Oh, I hate to look. Strange we don't hear the yogi's voice, Frank. Let's all be still. I think we shall hear it. My son, thou art going into extreme peril. Be warned in time. I'm listening, my teacher. But what is the meaning of this strange picture of great rocks falling into the sea? Interpret it according to the wisdom of the East, my son. The sea of thy life is black with clouds of seeming evil. But thou art strong to deny it, if thou wilt. I understand. In overcoming the powers of darkness in the place thou hast visited, thou hast done well. The brotherhood commends thee. But thy work will succeed only by unceasing vigilance. Dost thou understand, my son? Yes, my teacher. Tell those thou lovest they must be strong. Tell thy sister this. When there be an empty space within thy life, Fill it with love. Farewell, my son. Await the call. The picture's gone. And of all the mysterious things the yogi's ever said, this one wins all the prizes. Oh, I bet Uncle Frank understands it, don't you, Uncle Frank? Yes. Well, how about what he said to Mother? What does he mean by an empty space in her life? Oh, silly, he means because Father's not with her, of course. Yeah, I bet. I suppose the thing he means for her to go around falling in love with a lot of other people. You would. Oh, you make me simply wild. You know I don't think anything of the kind. The trouble with you is you're a complete extrovert. Is that so? You don't even know what one is. You... The gong will mark the end of the 91st round. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Frank. You haven't done that for a long time. Gee, won't you ever teach me how you do that, Uncle Frank? I promise you I'll never fight with Betty again, if you will. My word. You almost sent me to do it. Do you think the yogi meant you're actually going to some place near the sea, Frank? Or was that picture just... Well, symbolic. Dorothy, I can't tell you. I must find out first whether... I'll see who it is, Mother. Oh, hello, Najee. Come in. Did you get your ticket? Mm -hmm. Yes, Betty. I could have seen to that for you, Najee. Oh, thank you, Chandu. But I had to be in that part of Paris for something else. And it was easy to see about the ticket then. Chandu, I have seen on the street Dimitri. You have? Was 
Dorothy alone? Yes, he was hurrying along the street as though he wished to be out of sight as quickly as possible. Did he see you? No, Chandu. Uh, Nicky told me Dimitri came down to Cairo to see you a few weeks ago. Did he, Naji? Nicholas told you. How did he know that? I told him. What do you want, Naji? Mm, let us not speak of that. Well, that's all over now. But say, what... Naji, where did Dimitri go? Did you know that? Yes, I have followed him as fast as I can, so he will not see me. And they went quite a long way. That is why I was so late returning to the hotel. He entered the Rue Jose d'Antin, and I saw him stop before a little shop. A shop? What kind of a place was it? It was a, uh, how do you say, gym cutter shop. Very tiny, with small windows. Could you find the place again, Naji? Oh, of course, Chandu. Can you tell me exactly where it is? I will go with you and point it out, Chandu. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Just give me the location and I'll find it. Uh, Naji, did you notice that there was a clock around there anywhere? In the street, I mean? A clock? But no, Bob. Why do you ask? Because that message Uncle Frank found in the statute said, The clock strikes five. I thought if that was a meeting place, there might be a clock around someplace. Oh, no, Bob. Now, Naji, tell me where that shop was. I'll answer it. Hello? Robert, I'm listening, yes. Tell Frank what? I can't hear you, dear. Yes. Yes. And what? I can't hear you. Robert, listen to me a moment. What are you? I can't hear you. Robert, Robert, tell me where you are. Robert! <laughs> Thank you.